Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning into my channel. This is number 10 on the final review. We're just going to graph the following function, and then we'll use the graph in order to determine the domain and range. Now, if you find this video helpful, I hope you subscribe. It would really help me out. And I hope this video helps you in your test preparation and uh, just general math understanding. Alright, so we have a function, and the first thing I'm going to do is make a table which will help me to determine some coordinate pairs or ordered pairs to graph. Alright, so here's my table. The next thing I'm going to want to do is find some values of x to solve for our input in order to get our f of x, our output. And then that should give us some coordinate pairs. So let's take these values. So I'm just using these integers from negative 3 to 3, and then I'll figure out what f of x is, uh, x being negative 3 to 3, those integers. So I've written, rewritten the equation, but notice I've left those values where x are blanks, and that's so that I could write those in. So I'm going to start with negative 3 and work my way down the table, finding the coordinate pairs as we go. Alright, for example, we've replaced negative 3 in where the x's were. And right here, this would give us f of negative 3 equals 3 minus 2. The absolute value of negative 3 right here is positive 3. Then I'll just solve 3 minus 2. And we find f of negative 3 is a positive 1. So I can write that into the table. Some of you may prefer to graph these points as we go. I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank so that... Uh, we can just graph the ordered pairs once we have all seven of those from the table. Alright, now I have f of negative 2, so I've replaced the x's with negative 2. And I'll go ahead and solve this. Alright, so there we have it. The absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So let's go ahead and write that in the table. And there we go. We've got a couple coordinate pairs that we could graph right now. Now hopefully based on this table we'll be able to figure out once we start graphing a pattern that will continue the lines to the left and right or up and down. Alright, now we don't have to do this in order but uh, you can. I'm going to go ahead and skip up to 3 uh, just so you can see how this works hopefully and then we'll fill in the rest of those values. So f of 3 equals the absolute value of 3 is still positive 3. Absolute value being the distance a number is away from 0. So uh, as it turns out, f of 3 is also a positive 1, which matches what we had for negative 3. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this table, then we'll graph the rest of this. All right, so if you had solved the equation for these other values, we just filled these in. You know, if you're able to do that. So let's go ahead and graph these coordinate pairs, all right? I'm going to start with a negative 3, 1, which is right here. I got a negative 2, 0, a negative 1, negative 1, a 0, negative 2. So we see a pattern. This is quite linear, but based on the table, we see a change in direction as we have x is 1, y is negative 1, we have 2, 0, and 3, 1 as well. So we have a v pattern, which is, some of you may know what we would expect from an absolute value graph. All right, so in other words, we could continue the pattern to the left and the right. And we can see this V pattern uh, gives us two lines. Let's go ahead and put those in. All right, and there's our graph. So the final thing we're going to want to do is find the domain and range. Now, some of you may be asking, why do we know that these points are going to be there? You could put those into the graph, uh, sorry, into the table, and figure out what those are. But uh, for the sake of time, we're going to skip that part of it, okay? But just know that we could continue the pattern of this table both uh, with lower negatives and higher positives down here. Well, let's go ahead and figure out the domain and range. 
And we'll write the domain and range in interval notation. Uh, so we'll be using our brackets or parentheses in order to represent this. Now the domain is our x value, so we'll go from right to left. And how far to the left will this go? We'll go all the way to a negative infinity. How far to the right will it go? To a positive infinity. Now the reason we use regular parentheses here is because they're not included in the domain. Those are two undefined values. Let's go on now and look at the range. Uh, how far down does our graph go? Well, it looks like it stops right here at negative 2. The thing we want to do is know is negative 2 included. Well, yes, negative 2 is included in the range. It makes, it can give us a true statement. Where in the equation, if we had placed a negative 2 in for the y, we could have found a corresponding value of x that would have given us a true statement. And that, of course, would only happen at 0. So negative 2 is included, so we'll use a square bracket, or just a bracket, however you want to say it, and we can see that uh, this graph will go all the way up in both directions, all the way to infinity, which again is not included in the range. All right, I hope again that you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and I hope you do well in your math endeavors. Thanks for watching.